At a deep sea workstation 10,000 meters below, the divers caught a strange creature. Curious, the woman picked it up with a stick. The monster resembles an alien creature with 12 tentacles, each with sharp barbs. Just as the group was considering what name to give it, the base suddenly lost power. They turned on the flashlight, the cabin shaking violently, a huge tentacle kept slapping the cabin. The Cthulhu beast in the deep sea had launched a deadly attack on them. No one knew if they could survive this accident. They are a group of researchers, employed by the Skyworks group, stationed in the Marianas Trench to help extract oil. Half an hour ago Nora got up to wash up, she suddenly stumbled and the base shook slightly. Immediately afterwards a drop of water fell between her fingers and a violent explosion ensued. Nora ran frantically down the hallway, shouting as she ran, trying to wake up her sleeping teammates. But it happened so suddenly that by the time she ran into the safety hatch, only John had followed her in. When they tried to close the hatch, there were survivors at the end of the corridor running hard, with the seawater pouring in behind them and a thousand times the atmospheric pressure. Nora hesitated and pressed the button to close the door, and the instantaneous pressure difference triggered an explosion that sent both of them flying. When they woke up, the intelligent voice was broadcasting that the base structure was damaged and would soon collapse. The communication system is damaged, they cannot contact the ground, Nora decided to go to the escape pod. All the way out, rocks almost blocked the passage, because the vibration just now is comparable to an 11th grade earthquake. Just then, they hear a call, and it turns out to be their friend Paul, who miraculously survived being crushed under the rocks. Together they headed to the escape pod, crawling through the narrow passageway and passing by their dead teammate. When they finally reached the escape pod, they found that all the escape equipment was gone. Only one man sat in it, and that man was Captain. It turns out that Captain sent away the rest of the staff. Now the entire base of living people in addition to the four Nora, and Emily and Smith in the control room. Nora checked the situation of the base, the biggest problem is not the collapse that has occurred. Rather, the core cooling tower in the center is gradually heating up. Once the temperature reaches the threshold, it will explode. The only escape route was to put on a special diving suit, descend 12,000 meters to the bottom of the sea, and hike to another base a kilometer away. But whether there is enough oxygen and whether the diving suit can withstand the enormous high pressure at the bottom of the sea, no one can guarantee. After everyone was fully dressed, they stepped into the lift with fear and trepidation, but when they entered the water, they heard the sound of breaking glass. John's mask could not carry the pressure after all, a crack appeared. What happened next was an extremely cruel picture. Blood and water floating between the crowd, but everyone's eyes were drawn to the darkness before them, because the unknown danger is always more frightening than death. Five people descended to an elevator platform for a temporary rest, but here received a distress signal. Smith took his weapon and went out to check, only to see a bizarre scene. It turned out to be a strange deep sea monster, and when it was found, it was gnawing on the bodies of the workers. Several people were excited to study the monster, but the lights suddenly went out. Captain rushed to open the flashlight, the cabin around the sound of a loud crash. Captain shines his flashlight into the skylight overhead, and the scary unknown creatures make people's heads spin. Worse, the core cooling tower above suddenly exploded at this moment, and the powerful impact made them fall rapidly to the bottom of the sea. Everyone rushed to put on their masks to escape from the cabin. Around the dust, cannot identify the direction, the huge building wreckage kept falling down, the slightest mistake is the end of the world. Smith in order to cover Emily, himself by the falling wreckage hit, but fortunately the boulder with his shoulder, Smith is not seriously injured. The crowd carried him to the first staging area, only to find that Smith's oxygen filter was damaged, just almost suffocated to death. Paul also began to argue with Emily, saying that he had just seen a monster. Captain interrupts the two, calms everyone down, and then takes the cable car to the next staging area. But halfway there, they are forced to stop. The passage ahead is broken and there is a large area of standing water, so they can only move forward on foot. The most petite Nora first to explore the way, the water is not deep, they can pass one by one. When it was Paul's turn at the end, the accident happened. Unknown sea creatures reappeared and attacked Paul, who was left alone. The others noticed the difference, together with the force only barely pulled Paul out of the water. But the next second, the monster suddenly forced. Paul fell into the water uncontrollably. Then a blood mist bloomed, Paul was surprisingly strangled alive by the monster. The sudden scene of the four people scared out of their wits. Emily began to regret, saying that they should not come to this place. Smith also completely discouraged, plus the deep diving suit damage, he intends to stay here, unwilling to drag the team behind. But Captain disagreed, helping him to simply repair the oxygen filter, 
the four people once again assisted, towards the destination. The ocean is dark, fear surrounded the four, Nora can hear only their own heartbeat. Looking around the scattered ruins of the base, all four knew that this is the human deserved. Excessive desire crossed the bottom line of the ocean and they broke the geothermal layer, releasing the terrible alien creatures. A monster suddenly swept past Nora's eyes and all saw it clearly. They stand together in a group, turning off the searchlights and turning on the infrared, hoping to gain some sense of security. But the monster is a wandering ghost, constantly wandering around, picking the right prey. Emily a turned back, found behind Smith disappeared. It turns out he was attacked by the monster and dragged into the cave. Captain hastily climbed into rescue, so easy to drag out Smith, but the monster came again, Captain was instantly dragged away. Nora connected to this end of the rope was dragged in together, the monster pulled the two in the sea floor scurrying, Nora hit a platform to temporarily slow down the body. Captain's anxious voice came from the headset, woke up the confused Nora. Because the monster is lying on the side, eyeing the two, until then they can see the monster's face. Sure enough, the monster attacked, biting on Nora's mask. Captain rushed to the rescue, frantically whacking the monster. The monster was hit by the pain of the monster directly away, pulling the two quickly climb. The sudden rise in altitude produced a sudden pressure difference, and the deep diving suit kept alarming that if they continued up, they would explode. Captain shouted at Nora, telling her to cut the rope and run for her life. Nora was reluctant and wanted to take Captain away with her. But reality didn't give them a chance. Captain's deep diving suit couldn't hold up and his mask cracked. He looked at Nora and tapped the button on his waist, untying the rope between him and Nora. By the time Nora woke up from the aftermath of the explosion, she had fallen to the bottom of the ocean. The entire dark space, she was the only one left shouting Emily's name. When she turned around again, she saw a tentacle, but it was only an octopus, but she was still scared and fell down. At the same time, she also accidentally touched the fiber optic cable. Following the cable, Nora found an abandoned base. After entering it, Nora took a break to recuperate, more to adjust to the imminent collapse of the mind. After witnessing the death of her teammates, Nora didn't know where she was going to go, not to mention the monsters lurking in the shadows. She tries to contact her teammates on the radio and asks for help on the ground, but no response is forthcoming. In the midst of her internal struggle, Nora saw her new deep diving suit in the closet and her gaze became determined. She lifted the items on the table, spread out the map to determine the route, found a flare gun, and re-entered the dangerous abyss. Along the way, she talked to herself to cheer herself up. Finally, she heard Emily's voice in her headset, and a dragging trail appeared on the ground. She rushed to catch up with her, saw the long-lost light, Nora excitedly rushed forward and Emily hugged together. The reunion through life and death gave the two women renewed motivation. Nora also learned that when she and Captain were dragged away by the monster, Emily had been carrying the unconscious Smith hard towards the destination. Nora kept talking and cheering for the resilient Emily. I do not know how long to walk, finally reached the destination. But they walked in to see, let a person's head numb. The road leading to the gate, floating countless monsters. They hovered neatly, as if in hibernation. Nora and the two had no choice but to take the plunge into the monsters. They crept past, afraid to wake up the monsters. But the oxygen alarm of the deep diving suit went off untimely and a tentacle hit Nora's mask, she did not dare to move, but urged Emily to take Smith away. Finally, the tentacle let go of Nora, it seems to be a false alarm. But the next second, the tentacles grabbed down again, and the giant monster grabbed Nora and shoved it into its mouth. In a panic Nora pulled out a flare gun, a shot killed the monster, Nora managed to get out. But Nora escaped but found that the monsters had disappeared and were replaced by a huge black shadow overhead. She loaded her flare gun and fired a shot at it, and what appeared scared her to the point of weakness. It was a Cthulhu behemoth, just one head was a hundred meters long, and the slightest wave of its tentacles could cause violent vibrations. Nora was shaken off her feet, unconscious. Emily found her in time, dragged her back to the base, successfully rescued. The three of them supported each other and ran towards the escape pod. They thought they could be saved, but one of the three escape pods was broken. Nora did not hesitate, forcing Emily and Smith into the escape pod, and pressed the start button. Faced with the hope of survival, Nora chose to sacrifice. Watching her teammates leave, Nora crouched despondently in place, waiting to die. But the next second, she was not calm, because she found that the giant Cthulhu released a group of monsters, swimming in the same direction, and their end is exactly the teammates' escape pod. If we don't stop the monsters, our teammates will definitely die. 
Nora silently walked towards the computer and pressed the self-destruct program for the core cooling zone. With an explosion, Nora and the monsters died together. But the human desire is not the least bit engulfed by the flames and cold water. After Emily and Smith were rescued, Skye Group chose to hide the truth from the outside world. The blood sacrifice did not serve as a warning. Then the appearance of Cthulhu could not dispel the interests of the people. So, 